Welcome back to another creative project where we will build something interactive together. In this project, we are going to create a button ripple effect that adds a smooth animation whenever you hover over or click the button. If you look at the final version of our project, you'll see that when the cursor moves over the button, a ripple appears from the exact point where it touches, creating a beautiful visual effect. For example, if you move your mouse from the right side, the ripple will start from that side and gently spread across the button, giving it a lively and modern look. We'll be using JavaScript to detect the mouse position as it enters from different directions, and CSS to design and animate the ripple in a clean and stylish way. This simple combination of JavaScript and CSS allows us to create an elegant and professional effect that makes any button stand out. In the next section, we'll start building the HTML part of the project, so I'll see you there to begin coding step by step. Let's begin building our project together. Let's begin by opening Visual Studio Code and closing the Welcome tab. Next, we navigate to the File menu and select Open Folder. I'm going to create my project on the desktop, but feel free to choose any location you prefer on your computer. We will now click on the desktop and then select the New Folder button. Let's name this new folder Button Ripple Effect, which is our project name. We press the Enter key to confirm the name and then click the Select Folder button. Let's close that Get Started tab once more, and then over in the Explorer panel on the left, we'll create our HTML file. We will right-click and select the New File option. Let's name this file index.html and then press Enter. On the right side, we have our index.html file, which is currently empty, but we can generate an HTML5 boilerplate by simply typing an exclamation mark. We can simply type an exclamation mark and then select the first auto suggestion that appears. Our HTML5 boilerplate is ready, and the very first line is the document type declaration, which informs the browser that this page is written in HTML5. Next, we have the HTML tag, which acts as the top level container for the entire page and wraps both the head and body sections. Inside the HTML tag's opening tag, we have the lang attribute, which we set to English. Inside the head section, we find important meta tags and the title tag for our page. The char set attribute in that first meta tag defines the character encoding, and we are setting it to UTF-8, which is the standard for HTML5 and supports nearly all characters and symbols. Next up, this meta tag instructs Internet Explorer to use its most modern rendering engine, called Edge. The viewport meta tag instructs the browser on page scaling, where the first part of the content attribute adjusts the page width to the device's screen, and the second part sets the initial zoom level to 100%. Let's press Alt and Z together to enable word wrap, making our code much easier to read, and then we'll find the title tag which sets the page title for the browser. To see a live preview of our website as we code, we can right-click on the file and select the Show Preview option from the Live Preview menu. You can now see our website preview on the right side currently showing the default title, Documents. Let's update the page title to Button Ripple Effect, and we can collapse the Explorer panel on the left to give our preview more room. Inside the body, we will place a button that will center on the screen and later enhance with a ripple effect using CSS and JavaScript. For our button, we will use an anchor tag with the class BTM, set the href to a hashtag to prevent navigation, and place a span element inside with the text saying Button. We are adding a span element here because it allows us to add a visual effect to the button while keeping the text visible on top by using Z-index. We will explore the purpose of this span in detail when we add the visual effects, but for the moment, let's proceed by writing the code as shown. That wraps up our HTML setup, and we will move on to styling with CSS next. In our previous section, we successfully completed the HTML portion of our project. Now we are going to style our project using CSS. The next step involves creating a new CSS file. To open the file explorer, you can press Ctrl, Shift, and E together. Then in the explorer panel on the left, we right-click and select the option for a new file. 
Let's name this file style.css and save it. To get our styles working, we first need to link our CSS file from within the HTML document. Let's return to the index.html file and insert a link tag right after the title tag. We will type link and then select the third auto suggestion, which is the one for CSS. We have successfully created a link that connects our HTML file to the external style sheet. The href attribute defines the link's destination, and since both our files are in the same folder, this path will work perfectly. Since both files are in the same folder, we just need to write style.css for the URL. With that link established, we can now use CSS in our project. Now we are ready to start styling our project with CSS. First, let's close the File Explorer panel on the left by dragging this divider bar all the way over, then save our work with Ctrl plus S, navigate over to styles.css, and begin by styling the body section of our project. Next, we write the word body and then open a set of curly braces. Our first step is to remove the default margin from around the body element by setting it to zero. Our next goal is to center this button. To center the element horizontally, we use display flex along with justify content center. To center it vertically, we can set the height to 100% of the viewport height, which will use the full screen from top to bottom. To center our items vertically, we can use the align items center property. Now let's add a background color to our project. Let's set the background color to Alice Blue, which gives us a nice creamy base color. Let's update the font family for this button to use sans serif styling. Now that we have styled the body section, let's move on to styling our button. Our button has a class named btn, which means we can target it in our CSS using .btn. Let's begin by changing the button's background color to make it more visible. We will set the background color to pink and then adjust the padding adding 20 pixels to the top and bottom and 40 pixels to the left and right. This larger button size will make the ripple effect much more visible later on. Let's make the border rounded by adding a border radius of 5 pixels, and we'll also add a box shadow to give the button some depth. The first value we set for the box shadow is 0, which controls the horizontal shadow. The second value controls the vertical position of the shadow, which we are setting to 4 pixels. This shadow appears at the bottom of the button. Next, we specify the blur radius by setting it to 8 pixels. Currently, the shadow color is blue, but we want to change it to black. To set the color with transparency, we can use the RGBA function. We set the red, green, and blue values all to 0 for a black color, and set the alpha to 0.3 for 30% transparency. And with those styles applied, our button is looking quite nice. Let's get rid of that line under the button text by setting the text decoration to none. Next, we will change the text color to black. That will work for our button for the time being. Next, we will add a hover effect and include an element that produces a ripple animation. To add this, we can use the before pseudo element for the content. First, we need to set the content for the pseudo elements to empty and then we can position them absolute. Let's go ahead and set its position to absolute. For this element to be positioned absolute, its parent container needs to have relative positioning. Now we set the parent container to relative positioning, but the element remains invisible for the moment. Let's set the color to orange red for this element, but we still cannot see it yet. Let's add a width of 20 pixels and a height of 20 pixels as well. Now we can see our element appear, and we want to position it in the center by setting the left and top properties to 50%. The reason we need this adjustment is because we position the edge of the element at the center rather than its true middle point. To perfectly center the element, we apply a transform translate with both X and Y set to negative 50%. Next, we'll add a border radius of 50% to make this element a perfect circle and we want this circle to grow in size when we hover over the button. To create this hover effect, we can simply target the button hover state. When we hover over the button, we can target the before pseudo element and set its width and height to 300 pixels. You can see the big circle appearing when we hover, but it extends beyond the button's edges, so we apply overflow hidden to clip the extra parts. 
let's add overflow hidden to the button to prevent that extra part from showing. Now we have this visual effect, and to make the ripple animation smoother, we can add a transition that applies to both the width and height properties. We will set a transition duration of 0.5 seconds for both the width and height properties. We will set the height transition to half a second as well. As we hover over the button, we can now observe the ripple effect in action. Let's set the width and height back to zero to hide this element. Now, whenever your mouse enters the button, you'll see this hover effect originate from the center, as we positioned it using the left and top properties. In the next section, we will use JavaScript to position the circle based on the mouse. Now we need to make sure the button text is on top. If you recall from earlier, we wrapped a button text in a span element. To target that span element specifically, now we need to target the span element inside our button by writing .btn followed by a space and then span. Before we can adjust the z-index, we first need to set the position to relative. The default z-index value is 0, so setting it to 1 brings the text above everything else. As you can see, the button text now appears on top of everything else. That wraps up everything we needed to do with CSS. Next, we will use JavaScript to make the ripple effect originate precisely from where your mouse enters the button. In the next section, we will explore the JavaScript portion of our project. In our previous section, we completed all the CSS work for our project. Let's bring our project to life by adding some JavaScript functionality. Let's start by creating a JavaScript file. Let's begin by opening the Explorer panel using the keyboard shortcut, Ctrl-Shift-E. In the left-hand panel, we can right-click and select the New File option. Let's name this file index.js and hit the Enter key. We have created our index.js file, but we must connect it to our HTML before it can be used. Next, we will switch over to the index.html file and add a script tag right before the closing body section. We can simply type the letters SC and then choose the second autocomplete option, the one that provides the source attribute. The src attribute specifies the file we are linking to, and since both files are in the same folder, we can simply write index.js. Our JavaScript file is now properly connected and ready for use. Let's go ahead and close that Explorer section now. The main element we need to work with is this button. Our next step is to target this button within our JavaScript code, and we know the button uses the class btn. To select an element using its class, we will use the query selector method. We assign the button element to a variable using document.querySelector. We will type .btn inside these parentheses. Next, we will attach an event listener to this button to monitor mouse movements. So we just say btn element.add event listener, and the event we want to listen is mouse over, and when the mouse over happens, we want to trigger a function, and here inside this parentheses, we can get the event, which is the position of x and y, and anything inside related to this mouse over event. Let's use console.log to display the events page x value. Now, if we open the browser's console and hover over the button, we will see a number appear. As we move the mouse, the numbers in the console will change. Notice how the numbers are smaller on the left and larger on the right, as the x-coordinate measures the distance from the left edge. We can also get the y position in a similar way. This value represents the vertical position from the top of the page. However, we need the exact position relative to the button itself, where the top left corner would be zero for both x and y. To get the exact position inside the button, we need to subtract the button's offset from the top. For the vertical position, we can use the offset top property. Let's see what value we get for the button's position from the top. You can see the value starting from zero and increasing as we move toward the bottom of the button. You can see at the very top, the value is almost zero, showing as minus one while at the bottom, it reads around 57. For the horizontal position, we need to subtract from the offset left property. For the x-coordinate, we would get a value near 1 on the left side and a value around 125 on the far right. This approach allows us to set the starting point for the ripple effect to the exact location where the mouse enters the button instead of having it always originate from the center. 
Unfortunately, you cannot directly access the before pseudo element with JavaScript because pseudo elements are not part of the actual DOM. However, what we can do instead is create a variable and then update its value using JavaScript. Inside this before pseudo element, we will create a custom variable for the x position and another one for the y position, which we can then modify using JavaScript's set property method. Now we need to store these calculated values. Let's save this value as x, and we can copy this line to create a similar variable for y. Next, we target the style because we want to modify it using set property, and the specific property we change is x position written in double quotes. We assign this value to our x position variable and add the pixel unit since the value itself is just a number. We want to set the base unit for left and top as either pixels or percentage. We will now do exactly the same thing for the y position by using the style set property method and assigning it the value we calculated for y. Now, as we move our cursor anywhere over the button, we can see the ripple effect starting from that exact point. This means the ripple effect now originates precisely from your cursor position and expands outward in all directions. Let us test this out in our web browser. Let's open up our project in the web browser. Let's take a look at the result in the browser. That completes the functionality for our project. I truly hope you found this project enjoyable and informative. This cool button effect is something you can add to your own website. I look forward to seeing you in our next project together.